Yeah, yeah. She blew up on that human I'm back. Back with another reaction, man. This time we got the top 10 conspiracies that turned out to be true. Uh, this might be freaky. Let's see. What we find out here. He had a blank, blank look in his eye. He didn't know who we were. He didn't know we were his daughters. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. Oh, there's the president sitting there signing a document. <laughs> what the heck were we worried about? For this list, we'll be going over the strangest and most famous conspiracy theories that were actually conspiracy facts. Is there a theory you once believed that you now realize was a load of baloney? Tell us in the comments. Number 10, Roswell cover-up. In the summer of 1947, an object crashed down to Earth in Roswell, New Mexico. Theories that it was an alien spacecraft have pervaded pop culture for over a half a century since. Everybody thinks that Roswell was the first sighting of a, of a UFO in the United States, and that bull roar. The U.S. Air Force claimed that the object was merely a weather balloon only added fuel to the fire. And the conspiracy theorists were right it was no weather balloon and there was a cover-up. But it wasn't an alien ship either, probably. The object was a high-altitude balloon launched as part of Project Mogul. These balloons were intended to detect sound waves from Soviet atomic bomb tests. During the Cold War, the U.S. military couldn't exactly be honest about that in the papers. Now, whether you think that's another cover story, well... This better not be another damn Russian spy job. Number 9. I don't believe it. I believe it was motherfucking aliens. Big Tobacco's Big Lie. There's extensive use of this technology, which is called ammonia chemistry, that allows for nicotine to be more rapidly absorbed in the lungs and therefore affect the brain and central nervous system. Smoking causes lung cancer and a lot of other adverse health effects. Scientists demonstrated this definitively in the 1950s. However, public opinion wavered for decades, with sources springing up to generate controversy and debate. Some suspected that the tobacco industry was suppressing and distorting the facts through a coordinated campaign, and it eventually came out that they were. Together, the world's largest tobacco companies initiated Operation Berkshire to generate fake controversy and debate. Big Tobacco knew that smoking caused cancer and that nicotine was addictive. They decided not to make cigarettes less harmful because addiction made them a lot of money. Now, the work we did here is confidential, not for public scrutiny any more than I want's family matters. You're threatening my family now, too. Just goes to show, where there's smoke, there's often fire. Yeah. See how camels agree with your throat. See how mild and good tasting a cigarette can be. Number Ted nigga said, see how the camels can feel in your throat. That's crazy. They was trying to, they promote that shit like it was really like some good shit. Number eight, the White Sox through the World Series. The Chicago White Sox are on record for having one of the longest droughts between winning World Series at 87 years. Damn. However, they weren't always known for their bad luck. Back in the late 1910s, the Sox won in 1917, and they even had a wonder like shoeless Joe Jackson on the team. Yet, rumors during the 1919 series held that the games were fixed. The White Sox lost the series, but the rumors persisted into the next year. Eventually, a grand jury found evidence that eight players, including Jackson, though his role is disputed, were involved in a conspiracy to receive money in exchange for throwing the series. I think the Black Sox players saw a high reward for what they were doing. They could make as much as their yearly salary in one week. Uh, for fixing the World Series. While a trial found them not guilty, they were nevertheless banned from the league permanently. Damn. Number seven, Never heard nefarious agents infiltrated the government. The Church of Scientology is infamously touchy about any criticism of their organization. Get out! But I, I didn't mean anything by it. I don't even know L. Ron Hubbard. I, I... Their influence over celebrities is well known, but theories about their influence over the government are also out there. And here's the thing, Scientologists really did infiltrate the government. In the 1970s, at least 5,000 members of the organization conducted espionage on government agencies and private organizations. And this wasn't a fringe element either. The founder's wife, Mary Sue Hubbard, pleaded guilty and went to prison. 
It was one of the largest scale infiltrations of the U.S. government in history. All of this was done with the aim of destroying evidence that painted Scientology in an unfavorable light. It arguably had quite the opposite effect. Boy, those Scientologists, they can be pretty sensitive. Number six, mm. the FBI spied on political activists. All power to all the people! Those involved in political protests and other activist causes are often paranoid that they're being watched. And they should be, because it's happened before and it can happen again. Tapes from the hotel rooms, FBI reports, those are pieces of information that we shouldn't have. From the late 50s to the early 70s, the FBI engaged in illegal surveillance, infiltration, and disruption of protest movements and other organizations deemed subversive. He realized how sick this country was. We were trying to reveal the truth about segregation. These ranged from independence movements. I mean, I'm not really surprised about that because why would I be surprised about that? <laughs> you feel me? Like it's the government. They spy on shit all the, every, all the time. But it is what it is. To civil rights movements, to feminist organizations. They even had John Lennon, the former Beatles frontman, under watch. While this program, named COINTELPRO, was abolished in 1971, others may have taken its place. This represents the darkest part of the Bureau's history. Number five, the first female U.S. president. While the United States has yet to elect a woman to the office of president, by electoral college anyway, some theorize that a woman has assumed the duties of the office already. In 1919, President Woodrow Wilson suffered a debilitating stroke. This left him bedridden and partially paralyzed with some impaired judgment. If I don't help him be president, what a kind of wife am I? For over a year, Wilson's wife Edith aided him in governing the country to the point where she was basically performing his job in all but name. The degree of her involvement was kept a close secret and Wilson herself denied that she made executive decisions until her death. So he's like sitting there and they like move his arm and then they just release that to the press and that's how dumb people were back then. Number four, the government is spying on you. Yeah. The common refrain for cranks and conspiracy nuts for decades has been that the government is watching our every move. And it's not completely wrong. With the rise of smartphones and the internet, the government has unprecedented access to information on its citizens. They're following us. In the wake of 9-11, the Bush administration initiated far-reaching mass surveillance programs, both foreign and domestic. The NSA's activities in the years since have included sucking up and storing online history, emails, metadata, text messages, you name it. Edward Snowden revealed a lot of this yeah. info with his leaks, including how other governments were also implicated. Even if you send it to somebody within the United States, your wholly domestic communication between you and your wife can go from New York to London and back and get caught up in the database. Few believe that in the time since, governments have just given up. Number three, false justification for war. In August 1964, the USS Maddox fired a warning shot as three North Vietnamese torpedo boats approached the Gulf of Tonkin. After the torpedo boats opened fire, the Maddox sank all three. Two days later, the report of a second attack prompted President Lyndon B. Johnson to authorize further military action in Vietnam. For years, people questioned this justification. At one point, the commander of the ship said, we're not certain of the attack. Another point, they said, yes, we're absolutely positive. And then finally, late in the day, Admiral Sharp said, yes, we're certain it happened. It was eventually revealed that the second attack was imaginary, based on wrongly interpreted communication. It was imaginary? An attack on a fucking ship? See, I say you can't trust a motherfucker. You can't trust them people, bro. Cations intercepts. It wasn't the last dubious rationale for war. In 1990, George H. W. Bush leveraged false testimony crafted by a public relations firm to initiate the Gulf War. Over a decade later, his son would falsely claim that Iraq possessed WMDs to justify an invasion. The people of the United oh. States and our friends and allies will not live at the mercy of an outlaw regime that threatens the peace with weapons of mass murder. Number two, Watergate, Watergate. scandal. Perhaps the most well-known political conspiracy of all time. I heard of that, I got a commercial.
time, the Watergate scandal was unthinkable when it occurred. Because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. The scandal began when Republican President Richard Nixon's administration illegally wiretapped and broke into the Democratic National Committee headquarters. We don't know who ordered the burglary, and we don't really know what the burglars were up to that night. Their aim was to acquire information about Nixon's opposition in the forthcoming election. The, the arrest of the perpetrators led to attempts by Nixon and his administration to cover up their involvement. However, mounting evidence and leaks soon exploded into a scandal that has become a byword for political disgrace, leading to Nixon's resignation. One of the things that's so hard to oh, recreate... I didn't, and I didn't know that he um, resigned as president because of that. Wow. ...understand now, looking back, is there was no sense that the president could lie to the American people. Things uh, have changed, Garrett. Things have changed today. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the... <clears throat> Shut up, Watch Mojo. Um, this shit was more like political and like history than I expected, but... One, the CIA conducted mind control experiments. The idea of a government agency trying to control people's minds might sound like science fiction, but it really happened. What the fuck? Prostitutes with lore men. What the fuck was going on with my nigga right here? What's up with this nigga? Might sound like science fiction, oh, but it really oh, happened. That nigga, that nigga. Trying to control people's minds might sound oh, like science fiction, but it really happened. Prostitutes would lure men to these apartments. And then once the men were in the apartments, they were dosed with LSD. And then they were basically studied by CIA scientists. In the 1970s, yeah. a commission on the CIA's activities within the US exposed the existence of Project MK Ultra, a secret program that used drugs and torture to manipulate its victims' I mental have heard states. About that. Kool Aid was spiked with LSD. It was horrible. These experiments were conducted on prisoners in secret detention centers around the world, as well as within American universities, hospitals, and prisons. The CIA also funded brutal experiments involving electroconvulsive therapy in Montreal, Canada. Victims of MK Ultra included Ken Kesey and Allen Ginsberg. It's one of the darkest conspiracies out there, and we still don't know the full extent of it. Did you enjoy what this? What the fuck? What the hell? Goddamn government. Y'all let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to bell, man.